Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Nick. Welcome back. Um, where do we begin? Uh, the announcement a few months ago of them closing stores, uh, meeting with a, an attorney to restructure the bankruptcy process uh, was not a complete bankruptcy. They are just restructuring. They have announced closing 182 stores. Now, from past experience, this is usually where it starts. Places like Hills, KB Toys, Blockbuster, Circuit City, places like that, they started closing stores to restructure. They were trying to save money and trying to figure out what stores were underperforming, what stores were worth keeping around. Um, we've had our Toys R Us about 45 minutes away from me. I don't remember exactly how long we've had it, but the store that used to be there, which a lot of you may remember, uh, they were they actually Toys R Us actually bought out. Um, Kitty City and Children's Palace. The building still looks like a castle, which is pretty cool. Um, I remember going there to get uh, the Pee Wee's Playhouse playset when I was younger. Uh, a Red Rider BB gun, which of course they didn't shoot BBs. It was just you pulled the trigger and it made noise, but still pretty cool. Still have it. Um, it, it just seems like this is sort of the writing on the wall. Um, them closing 182 stores what is this going to mean um, is this going to lead to them going well we have to close more stores and then 4 or 5 months from now they're going well we don't know if we could fully restructure could Toys R Us go the same way that KB Toys did that Circuit City Blockbuster places like that same goody these places that were once huge market juggernauts and for whatever reason either bad investments um, they had really bad holiday sales this year and you can't really blame the internet because Toys R Us kind of revolutionized their their way when they consolidated with their with their sister store Babies R Us they uh, allowed more of a, a I was talking to an employee and they said the reason why they did that was because a big chunk of the profits is the the babies are us side of the store people come in there they register online they register in the store you can get you know clothes um, formula I mean you name it you could get it for you know a baby or a child so it's it, it was a business decision that, you know, ultimately probably saved Toys R Us merging the two stores. Uh, the other bad side of it was when they when they did that, a lot of the space, I mean, one whole side of the store is, is nothing but the baby side. They had to eliminate a lot of stock space that they used for the regular area of, you know, the action figures, the stuffed animals, the board games, the video games. The store has changed significantly over the years. Um, I'd have to say the last couple years that I've gone into Toys R Us has been a huge disappointment. They, I, I mean, I mostly get uh, wrestling figures. So I've had to turn to basically ordering online as opposed to dealing with uh, the nonsense of having to hunt in stores because the majority of the stores, especially around here in the Midwest and Illinois and elsewhere, Walmart sucks when it comes to stocking their toys. Meyer Target is really dropping the ball. Um, toys R Us has always been that like magical place when you were a kid where, you know, like I said, we had Children's Palace and then it turned into Toys R Us. But I remember going in there uh, when I when I turned 16, you know, I got my driver's license. I could drive there myself. 
and I drove there, and I got, like, a couple of wrestling uh, figure, like, collector's packs. I got some PlayStation 1 games, play, you know, stuff like that. And it's really amazing to see the, the market has changed so much. Uh, I mean, you can go, Amazon is killing it. it. It has for, you know, going on three or four years now. When you can order something on Amazon Prime and get it within like two days or one day shipping, you can't beat that. I see we got one person watching. Feel free to comment in the chat if you want. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where, you know, I myself was born in 85. I turned 33 next month. So we didn't, we had the internet. Uh, I remember we got our first computer in 95. It was an NEC. But we used it for like chat, solitaire, some PC games and stuff. But the internet wasn't quite what it is now. Nowhere near. You know, we, we had AOL dial-up. And, of course, you know, somebody called the house or somebody picked up the phone and it kicked you offline automatically. It's not, not like the wonderful Wi-Fi that we have now where, I mean, you just literally hit a button and it just you're on. Uh, you could order stuff, but it was different. Uh, most of the st time when you ordered stuff, you had to make a phone call. You had to call a uh, 1-800 number, and, you know, you would give the person the item number out of the catalog, and then it would take you know sometimes a week now you can order stuff and it arrives in a day which is pretty cool in my you know in my opinion um there are a lot of things that you know we i wouldn't say we had to give up but there's a lot of things that changed that i really miss uh the convenience of being able to get on your iPhone or iPad or whatever smart device you have, pull up Toys R Us, pull up Best Buy dot com, pull up you know Walmart dot com, whatever website you want to use, Amazon, and you pick your item, load it in there, you pay for it with your credit card, and it's it's you know orders ready to go, and it comes to your house you know two three days. Um, Netflix. Hulu, things like that. Um, we had video stores. We had uh, Blockbuster, Hollywood Video. Uh, we also had, you know, little mom and pop places. Um, Old Town Video, which was probably like five minutes away from me. Little mom and pop place. Uh, this was before they had multiple copies of everything. You, you never really truly knew the struggle of... <laughs> You'd go there on like a Friday night and you were just hoping that the tape, that you, the VHS tape that you wanted was behind the case. Or if you got lucky, you, you went over to the return box and there was a copy in the return box. We were in an NES games, Sega games, Super Nintendo. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story. I don't know. I, I remember a lot from when I was younger. Donkey Kong was always a really fun game for me. I always loved Donkey Kong on the Atari 2600 and uh, the really bad version that was on the NES. Donkey Kong Country. i seen commercials for it on TV. It looked awesome. It was one of the first games that actually had realistic 3D graphics. And it was just really cool. Donkey Kong Country, in my opinion, number one and two, was were fantastic. They, they they still are. They still hold up really good. Um, but the story goes, I I don't know why. I was just really bummed out. Um, you know, years later, obviously, uh, we all figured out why um, I was diagnosed, mm, I don't know, probably 10 years ago with uh, clinical depression, anxiety. PTSD, things like that. And uh, being at that age, you know, I just knew I was sad. Didn't really know why. So anyways, I was really bummed out. Uh, I should have been happy because it was a Friday. Uh, TGIF, you know, the, the wonderful shows we had on. 
And for some reason, I was just, like, super bummed out. And uh, my dad, um, he was like, hey, let's go to the video store. You know, he could tell that I was not having a real good day. I said, okay. So I went to the video store, and, you know, I'd look at the movies and the video games and stuff like that. And uh, there it was, Donkey Kong Country sitting right there on the shelf. Uh, the box was there, but the game wasn't. So I was like, well, maybe it's behind the counter. Maybe they have it in the drop box. Apparently they had just got it that day. They hadn't stocked it yet. The lady at the counter was like, oh yeah, you know, we got copies right here. I was super excited. I couldn't wait to get home. And I remember, I think I rented a couple other games too. I don't remember exactly what they were. I rented some wrestling tapes. Uh, I probably wanted rented this one VHS tape like a thousand times. Uh, heavyweights and uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So I took them home and I uh, popped it into my Super Nintendo and my day just got so much better, at least for the time being. I was so mesmerized by the graphics on this game and, and how fun it was that just for you know how many hours I at least forgot about the fact that I was depressed. But I went to Toys R Us and went over to the, the, the uh, area that they had the video games, pulled the paper out of the, the sleeve, went up to the counter, and I bought my brand new copy of Donkey Kong Country. I was super excited because I had saved up money and uh, my mom and dad paid the difference. I had bought my first video game. And it was it was awesome. Uh, it was one of those times where I was so proud to own my very first game that I paid for, and I added it to my game collection. I still have it. The I don't know. It's it's just the joy of of going to the store and finding the product. Um, Toys R Us. I hope it doesn't happen. Even now, being thirty two years old, it's still a magical place. You go in there and you see parents with, with their kids and you see them have the exact same feeling that you did. It's one of those where it's like, at least for that time being when you're in the store, you forget about all the bullshit outside of it. You know, you see all the, the really cool toys, some of the new stuff, some of the retro stuff that's come back out. And it's like, wow, this moment in time, I'm at least... Uh, you know, just hanging out, looking at toys, having a blast. Uh, I see two people are watching. Um, feel free to chat. Say something. Um, I don't do these that often just because I, I don't know. I The channel's been doing pretty good. I got 445 subscribers. Um, the, the bankruptcy thing with a lot of stores you gotta wonder what happened uh, Hills Department Store was a store that was about 15 minutes away from us and I mean it had everything it had toys clothes electronics I mean it was it was a huge juggernaut it really was it was one of those stores that we didn't even know what Walmart was we didn't even have Walmart we only knew of Kmart and Hills. That's all we had. We didn't get a Walmart until, I don't know, probably 96, something like that. And then uh, our Hills closed in 90, I want to say 98, something like that. And uh, then it was Ames, and then that went under too. Now it's a big R. Um, Blockbuster... Ours is gone. Most of them are gone. There are a few left. Our Kmart closed two years ago. Uh, they're closing the rest of them. I don't remember exactly how many Kmart stores are still left. When they announced that they were closing more stores, and then they announced that they were closing our location, even though it hadn't been the greatest store in the last probably five, six years, it was still very disappointing because I had bought so many wrestling figures so many music CDs from there over the years and I went in there one last time about two weeks before they closed 
and I, I took pictures and it's it's still there they, they haven't torn it down or anything but it was just it was just so sad not only because of you know all the people that lost their jobs but just the fact that I mean it, it's an end of an era um, a lot of kids that have been born you know in the last uh, you know, after like 2000, you know, granted, you know, we have Netflix, Hulu, places like that. They'll never really experience the, the awesomeness of uh, being able to, you know, go to a video store and pick a video that you wanted. Uh, read in the back of the case, you know, saying, oh, you know, this looks good. Granted, like I said, technology is great. It is. Technology is awesome. Um, technology has also, in my opinion, I wouldn't really say destroyed a lot of things, but it's it's made it to where a lot of the things that I have huge nostalgia for and miss a lot. Uh, Best Buy just announced that they are pulling CDs from their store. Uh, Walmart still sells CDs. Meyer has a small section. Best Buy over the year, couple, three or four years, I think, has gradually downsized its its movie section and its music section to like maybe two to three aisles. Um, I'd say five, six years ago. They still had the majority of it. They still had aisles of music CDs. And, you know, more people download using iTunes and Android and stuff like that. You know, they... MP3 files. I currently have, I think it's over 800 CDs. I, I still collect them. I buy them from thrift stores, Goodwill, things like that for a couple bucks a piece. I know I could download them. I would just rather have the physical copy. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not up with technology. I love technology. It's it's awesome. Uh, you know, that's how I'm able to talk right now on my iPhone right here, and you know, on live. 10, 15 years ago, hell, even probably six, seven years ago, I would have never thought I'd be able to do this. Uh, the the video phone type technology was uh, one of those things where. You know, it was very expensive. Not many people had it. My very first cell phone was a Nokia. One of those brick phones. You would charge it and it would last for like a week. We didn't know what texting was. Uh, you could make phone calls, play a couple of games on it. I think one was Snake and the other one was like Centipede or something, something like that. And then, you know, we went to the flip phones. And then we got the little... Uh, like ones with the keyboards but then when texting became big and then of course you know I've had an iPhone since the iPhone 4 um, I love having a smartphone I just, sometimes I, I realize that I pretty much have my phone in my hand 90% of the day uh, when I went into Best Buy years ago and I got my first smartphone which was I think an Android Thunderbolt or something I don't even know and then you know Facebook came out with an app things like that and from there there on it was like you know uh, that was pretty much the end of it I wouldn't say I'm addicted to my phone and social media but it's it's a big it's a big, powerful thing for a lot of people. Um, I don't know why in the world, uh, you know, I don't know when exactly it happened. Um, it's one of those things where I almost wish that, like, people weren't able to get a hold of me, to be honest. That they weren't able to text and, and call me and you know, having the access to Facebook and Twitter and things like that. They're, they're fun. Um, some days I just like to, you know, pop in an old movie. You know, eat some nachos. 
and uh, you know, pretend it's like 1994 again. I, uh, you know, I live, I live by myself with my dog, and you know, I'm the '90s guy, just like the you know title says, I'm the '90s guy. I, uh, I love old technology. Um, the 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 interesting thing about the press release of Toys R Us was they were they mentioned that I think it was ninety nine their holiday season they had a deal with Amazon and that Amazon was going to be their exclusive provider for online sales and something got screwed up to where people's packages the Christmas of ninety nine stuff was was backed up for weeks and people didn't receive their gifts like they were supposed to that put a huge uh, damper on their sales and Christmas sales for any company are, are you know what are their biggest money makers you know it, it sets the tone for the rest of the year apparently this year wasn't any different their sales were very low I don't have the exact numbers but they were not anywhere close to what they wanted. Um, of course, you know, one of the hot toys this year was the fingerlings, the little animals. Last year was Hatchimals. Back in the day, it was Tickle Me Elmo. I mean, you name it. It's, it's always something. And I do have to give it to them, though. Their, their website is very easy to use. Uh, their shipping is relatively pretty low. But the thing is, I think they were not... They didn't really roll with the curve of technology. My kids love Tide Pods. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tide Pods. I, I, I laugh at the fact that this is has become an issue with with people... Tide Pods. When I was, you know, these kids' age, we did stupid crap. You know, we we would make bike run. I wonder where we can get the WWE Barbies now. I don't know. I think they're selling them on WWE.com, uh, if I remember correctly. I know the one in Champagne. they're not selling well. The shelves are stocked with them beyond belief. Like, they barely had anything, and the shelves are just flooded with these WWE Barbies. Um, as far as I know, Target has started selling them, too. I thought they were a Toys R Us exclusive. Apparently, I went to Target, and they now sell them as well. Uh, I'm sure Walmart and other places will probably follow suit. The, uh, the bullshit thing is, for anybody that collects anything, whether it be Marvel whether it be wrestling figures, anything. The distribution right now in any store is absolute garbage. You go to the stores, Walgreens should get on that so I can use, there you go. <laughs> I actually got my Walmart, or uh, Walgreens exclusive Becky Lynch. Um, right here. I got this the other day. Uh, this and of course, the Walgreens exclusive Sasha Banks. These weren't that hard to find, oddly enough. I just bought her. Yeah. Um, I was worried that they were going to be hard to find. But I went to two Walgreens. And there they were. Uh, they didn't have a lot of them. They had like maybe four or five. But uh, there for a while, they were really stocked. I also got the Walgreens exclusive Triple H and the Shawn Michaels that came out, uh, not last year, but the year before. Uh, it's interesting to see store exclusives because Target exclusives are the NXT What's Up Doc. Not much, Yard Cell Hunter. How's it going? Uh, congratulations on the growth of your channel, man. Uh, mine has not hit anywhere near yours, but it's it's getting there. Uh, the biggest thing I'm running into with channel growth is so many people watch the videos, but they don't subscribe. Uh, I looked in the analytics of the uh, views and stuff, 
And it's like 60% of the people that watch my videos don't subscribe. Uh, I don't know why that is. I mean, granted, I could be more consistent on making these videos. Uh, you know, this is only like the third live video I've done. I enjoy these things. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like, let me ask you this. Would you give up some of the technology of, you know, like having Netflix to go back for at least like a couple days and relive some of the awesomeness of a new CD that came out on Tuesday? And it's like, oh, man, you know, I can't wait till this album comes out. That means your tags are working, but you aren't grabbing them. Try giveaway asking people to subscribe and like to enter. Yeah, it's a good idea. I, I should do that. I'm just happy I've hit 445. Uh, that's, I mean, that's that to me is awesome. I've had YouTube since 2005, but I haven't actually done anything serious with it until about, I don't know, about a year, two years ago, something like that. Uh, before I just use it to watch, you know, other people's videos and, uh, you know, stupid cat videos back in the day, parodies, things like that. Um, I've found a lot of really good channels over the years, uh, you know, that have the same passions that I do with uh, wrestling, retro video games, things like that. I don't know. You, YouTube's been good to me. Uh, I've done some projects over the years with some really good people. Had a lot of fun. Uh, wish I could go back and, uh, you know, relive some of those. A lot, a lot of good times. I never thought that I would ever even have this type of platform. That there would be other people that would want to watch things that I talk about. Things that I do. I never thought that... You know, other people out there had the the same passion that I do for action figures and, you know, just all-around retro goodness. Um, just try not to get caught up in the script scribers number. You might as well probably fall into every aspect more. Thanks, man. Uh, I, I just keep, you know, plugging away. Um... I know that you shouldn't do videos in order to get views, you know, just do videos that, you know, about things that you like, you know, doing and stuff. Like, there's a lot of my topics that other people may not be interested in. And then there's ones that I do that there's a lot of people. I did a review on the Walgreens exclusive Becky Lynch, and a lot of people liked it. I did a video, like, I don't know. About a year ago, about uh, what was it? I don't know. I think it was about like just brands that are no longer existing, things like that. And it's got, I think it's got like, I don't know how many freaking views. That is cool. Yes, I did see that. That's great. Uh, do you think the Miz will ever be? Uh, in the WWE uh, championship picture anytime soon or you know any maybe even after WrestleMania I would love to see it I mean granted I love him bringing the prestige back to the Intercontinental title it's it's awesome uh, I mean did you see the reaction that he got when he showed up and for sure, but he's doing great. Yes, he is. Uh, he won the Intercontinental title back from Roman. And then I watched the video that somebody, the biggest factor in growth. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing with The Miz is, I mean, granted, there were a few years that they just didn't use him. A 45-minute radius. One of them's okay. The other two aren't that great. Um, I wish I had uh, a store called Savers. Okay. Yeah, I wish we had a store called Savers or um, Half Price Books. I always see people talking about Savers. Apparently, Savers is pretty much like a Goodwill. Um, 
Salvation Army. Yeah, I have Sabres up here. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to one. We have a store um, probably, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half away from us. It's called Five Below. It's not really a thrift store, but it's more of like a, um, I would kind of like a Dollar Tree, but any everything's like five dollars and under. I want a half price books or yeah, I've heard that too. I've watched people's videos of half price books, and some stuff is overpriced, but some of the places they just uh, you know I've watched dumpster dive videos where they just throw stuff away. Like, if it doesn't sell or they don't want to mess with it, they just throw out the garbage. Our GameStop, uh, unfortunately, has that method of destroying everything. They cut the cords, they they uh, break the disc, and then throw them in the garbage. Because I've actually looked, and I'm like, why? why? Why break it? Throw it away, let someone else have it. You know, and instead of, like, marking the price down, the GameStop's usually just... You know, keep it at a relatively stupid price and then throw away in the garbage before they destroy it. Like, I waited, what was it, about a month before the new 2K18 came out. And I wanted 2K17 on PlayStation 3. And, yeah, yes it is. It's 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 BS. Uh, so, I went up there and the guy was like, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I I think so too. GameStop is is definitely a circle in the toilet bowl. I I don't see it lasting either. They've shot themselves in the foot so many times. They especially with their retro game initiative, where people have have got fakes in the mail from them. That was a venture they should have never went in. Uh, GameStop when it first came around here, they they sold and accepted DVDs. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, do we actually need a physical game store anymore? Is that market really there? Most people I know download the game from the PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, and it's good to go. You know, they don't, uh, There, there's no need for them to actually go to the store and pick it up. And they always ask you, would you like to pre-order this? Would you like to pre-order this? No, I'm good. Uh... I'll tell you a quick story about Hot Topic. Them having the uh, the uh, Ring of Honor, uh, New Japan deal, things like that, you know, with the Bullet Club, stuff like that. They had some Bullet Club t-shirts. I wear 2X. So I asked the lady at the counter. Yep. Yeah, they're big on the Funko Pops. Uh, I picked up my uh, exclusive... Chris Jericho, you just made the list figure from there. Because apparently they got a deal with Ringside Collectibles. Uh, so I I was like, okay, you know, do you guys have any two axes in the back? Oh yeah, Hot Topic's awesome. So I, the lady was like, well, we can order it online for you. And I just kind of looked at her like, yeah, so can I. I can get on my phone right now and order it. But the whole point of me coming in the store was to buy it here. I mean, they always tell you that, too. They're like, well, we can order it for you and get it shipped to your house. And I just kind of give them this look like, yeah, I could do that, too. Nothing new. I could do it. I don't need for you to do it. I mean, I appreciate it, but, the you know, <laughs> it's, it's with any store. They're like, oh, we don't have that product right now, but we can order it for you. And, of course, I give them the same look. I'm like, mm-hmm. And if I would have known that, I would have done it without leaving the house. And, of course, they're like, well, you know, we could get it shipped to the store for free, too. And then I'd have to drive a half hour over here to pick it up. Or I could just get it shipped to my house. I mean, granted, you know, I understand why, you know, they do these things. They, you know, they, they're like, it's easier for them to have it shipped from a warehouse to your store. Or have it shipped to your house. Less and less stock in the store. And I ordered the Bullet Club t-shirt. And I ordered... Uh, it was a retro Triple H shirt. And it says, 
I am the game because I am that damn good. And it was a shirt that came out in uh, probably late 99. I still have my original shirt. This is a, uh, a remake of it, same t-shirt. But of course, you know, this was a large and of, and I, I don't fit in a large anymore. So I, I found this on uh, their Hot Topics website. They had a sale going on. I think it was uh, buy two for 20 or something like that. That drives me nuts about t-shirts too. Yeah, I, I told the lady, I said not to be an asshole, but you do realize the, the majority of wrestling fans are males and we're bigger. You know, we're we're stocky. <laughs> they have it stocked with small, medium, and large. And like maybe two extra large. And I was like, wow, this has been going on for almost five years now. I was like, how many two X's do you get in? She's like, well, we don't really know what we're going to get. I know that's bullshit because it says right in on the box how many you get. So I told her, I said, if you really want to make things easier and sell a lot more t-shirts, you need to get an equal amount of sizes for everybody. Because I could have bought the t-shirt here in the store and made you guys money in the store. But now I'm just going to get on my phone, get on the WWE shop website or your guys' website, order it myself and get it shipped to my house. You know, the whole point of me coming in here was to be able to see the shirt, look at the shirt, buy the shirt, and most likely wear the shirt that day. So, I mean, granted, I've been able to snag some every once in a while. I found them on there, but it's just a huge pain in the ass. Just like I, I wanted to buy the new Maroon 5 album. And Walmart, I'm not buying from Walmart because they sell nothing but uh, censored CDs. So I went to Meyer. They had like, I don't know, two copies. So I grabbed it, put it in the cart, and I was going to buy it. For some reason, I didn't. So I went back a couple days later, gone. They didn't get any more in. And I was like, well, I could just order it or I could download it. So I would download it on iTunes, but I, I like having the physical copies. So I, I spent like... I don't know, $10 on Amazon and just have it sent to my house. It'll be here tomorrow. But uh, we have a store in probably about 15 minutes away from us called Chart Records. place has been there since probably 70s. It's one of the last remaining stores that sell physical copies of CDs, stuff like that. And uh, you just don't see stuff like that anymore. Most places, like I said, Best Buy is getting out of it. Um, when you can download it digitally, uh, same thing with video games. I'd say eventually stores will, you know, basically have it to where, uh, you just, you know, download a code and it's good to go. With the success of the Nintendo Switch and so many games coming out digitally instead of physical copies... What does this mean for physical media? Uh, it's one of those things where you got to wonder what's next. But my battery's about to die. I have to go charge it. Thanks for everybody watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, would you guys like for me to come on again sometime? Uh, leave comments down below if you'd like to see any specific topic that you'd want to watch. Yeah. I mean, granted, people don't even want to leave their house now to go watch a movie at a movie theater. Um, it's People have become more and more less socialized. You know, I, I've been in a room full of people, and they've all been like this. Just looking on their phone. They will text a person in the room. Instead of... I mean, granted, I've done that too, where, you know, I wanted to say something to that person... About, you know, either someone else in the room, like, you know, a joke or something. And I'll text it to them. We've all done that. <laughs> it, I mean, we've all done it. But, like, I, I try not to bring my phone. Yeah. I try not to bring my phone out when I'm eating with other people. Just because I think it's rude. 
uh, you know, like when I go to Buffalo Wild Wings with my buddy, I'll look at my phone a little bit and put it away, you know, just so we like the videos. You have a lot of good points. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of things that us as human beings have done uh, to unsocialize ourselves. I mean, granted, I, I don't like being in social situations. I have social anxiety. But I've done my best to overcome a lot of that, or at least suppress it to a certain extent. But uh, anyways, thanks guys for watching. Um, you know, like I said, I appreciate everybody for, uh, you know, all the watching of my videos. I appreciate all the comments, everything. Um, and I'll see y'all later.